Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast with Benji Nice, an emergency podcast. We were just in the middle of doing 2021 team previews. We just got my phone. My phone blew up whilst I was doing the Bahrain Victorious team preview because news has come out on Vila Flitz that Tom Dumoulin has quit cycling temporarily. Now, I don't think this is just a rumour mill because Vila Flitz is... When it comes to Jumbo Visma news, is is pretty reputable and bang on. So I'm taking this as uh, this this is happening. Um, and yeah, Raymond Kierkhoffs and Maxim Horsels have put this out. The link is in the description uh, if you want to read the article. It's in English because they obviously know there's going to be a lot of news about this. But yeah, the the headline is that Dumoulin is taking a break from his cycling career. He's just in consultation with Jumbo Visma when they're at the they're at the team camp in Alicante in Spain right now. By the way. I think they've had discussions there and he's taking unpaid leave for an undetermined time. What's your initial reaction, Benji? Are you completely surprised or caught off guard? Yeah, I am. And quite simply, over the last couple of years, he hasn't had the best time as a cyclist. So on paper, with all the reasons that we'll go into in a second here, I can get where it's coming from. But Yesterday, he only announced the schedule for this year, and he did so on Twitter in a pretty happy message. So it's just so shocking that it it sounds impulsive because of the timeline that we're on. Like yesterday at the training camp, they announced the schedule, and right now he's saying that he's not doing that schedule. So it's kind of, uh, I'm hyped for the season. Next day, ah, oh, I hate cycling. So yeah, it's difficult to to really gather the reasoning behind it that way. It just feels impulsive, while it probably is not on his end. So just as background, if you're not too familiar, if maybe you're a, you're a new cycling fan, Tom Dumoulin, I, I don't think it's controversial to say, in 17-18 was the second best GC rider in the world, and I think that was I think that was clear cut behind Chris Froome. He won the Giro in 2017. He came second in the Tour de France in 2018, second in the Giro in 2018. He's got four Giro stage wins, three Tour de France stage wins, ITT world champion at Bergen in 2017 when they had that climb at the end of the IT, the uh, time trial. He's just a classic, yeah, classic uh, GC guy with an engine, good TT, and I thought that TT had come back this year. He was at Sunweb uh, pretty much his whole career, even with, you know, Argos Shimano, Tim, and then all through to when they were the incarnation of Sunweb in 2019. He had a bad knee injury in the Giro, I think it was 2019, Benji, when he crashed, was it? I think he crashed after in stage five or stage four or five, hurt his knee badly. And that was the in the, the recovery from that with, uh, with Sunweb. I don't think from what I read and what came out, the communication stuff wasn't too great having to drive like 12 hours or 10 hours, Dumoulin said, <laughs> after he just had surgery on his knee. And he like turned around and was like, why am I doing this? Um, and so he left Sunweb. Um, one, one of the many riders to have left Sunweb, who's like a top shelf rider, went to Jumbo Visma. Now, I don't know if it was on big money or whether it was like low base, big incentives, because that could factor into how happy he might be. Because Benji, if he's on low base, big incentives, because they're giving him a chance in a really strong team, but hey, you're signing here because we're going to make you our leader for one of the Grand Tours, then if I was him, I wouldn't be too happy that I'm not going to the Giro and then Tour de France, I'm probably going to be a domestique for Primoz Roglic. So that's a long way of saying, Benji, that um, I think there's a whole host of things that are playing into this, not just um, not just the fact that he might not have had res- good results last year. I think he's also looking forward to this at this year in 2021 and thinking, well, geez, I was the best, second best guy, the up and coming ascendant GC guy in 2017 18. And now I'm going to have to play second fiddle in the big races in, in 2021. And that combined with everything else. And I'll talk about sort of the impositions of lockdown and COVID on these guys in a second. But do you think I'm out of, completely out of whack or out of line for, for even mentioning that? Or do you think it's something different? Or do you think that could be playing into it? Yeah, I think it's a valuable option, though. I think we're working off scraps in total regarding what the reasoning could be. There's plenty of reasons that it could be, and this is one of them. He was in a position that he was leading ground tours at Sunweb. He was dissatisfied with how they handled his injury and probably some other stuff surrounding that that ended up him leaving Sunweb. 
and he joined Jumbo. I'm not sure it's going to be on low base with high and center. I think it's going to be a pretty good balance knowing what he's done as a cyclist beforehand. Obviously, he came from an injury, so that plays into the contract negotiations most likely. So you might not be too off on that. And I think that, indeed, he's entered a team where he was perhaps planning to be a leader again pretty soon. But in the tour. it really happened last year. In the Tour de France, he had a saddle sore that ended up playing into his racing and he ended up falling into a domestique role by choice for Roglic on that Puerto Ballet stage and or was it Perisuda stage already? It's the same one. Never mind. It's the same stage. <laughs> Either way, I think that that might be a valid option but there's so much else. I think there's a real mental struggle for Dumoulin as well. He He came from that knee injury from the Giro and Rode that Tour de France, he ended up seventh in that Tour de France where he domestiqued for Roglic last year. And after that, he mentioned in an interview that he came very close to stopping cycling already before that Tour de France because of the injury, because of how all of that was handled. He didn't feel like cycling. He Cycling was still one of his biggest things, most likely, but he wasn't sure he wanted to be a pro cyclist anymore. Well, he was going to be a doctor, and, right? He's a smart guy. Yeah, he's a clever guy. That's That's for certain. So, yeah, I think he he needs to find his way again. And I think this might be a good step in doing so. But it's just a bit sad for the sport, I would say, because Tom Dumoulin has been on the top shelf of cycling for quite a while. The injury took him out of that. Same year, I think, that it took Froome out of contention as well. So we basically lost the top two GC guys in the span of three years, being replaced by Pogacar and Roglic right now. So a complete twist of generations regarding the top there. And just just sad for the sport. I can't put too much other words into Tom Dumoulin at this end. Do you feel like there's any other reasons that could be leading to this? I mean, I don't know. He, he hasn't, in this article, there is no direct quote from Dumoulin saying why he's stepping away. So I want to make that clear uh, that we, we don't, I don't know the reason. Benny doesn't know the, the exact reason why he's stepping away. We're just sort of speculating on the combination of reasons that it could be. I think there's a statement that he's taking the time to find out what he wants to do with his future and find an answer to the question whether he still wants to be a pro cyclist. But that doesn't really say too much, and that's not a direct direct quote either. Um, but I think you know he, he's a guy who was, as I said, coming up, second best GC guy. He's winning races. He won that. Uh, but then his last race win was in the Tour de France in 2018. That's his last pro win. And I guess when you're becoming more accustomed to winning and then you've got this knee injury, as you said, Benji, and it's it's not getting better or maybe you're not getting you're not getting back to that previous level and then you've got this program that, yeah, you're just not going in the right direction. I mean, he is younger, I think, than Primoz Roglic still. So I guess maybe that's all playing into it. And then you've got all the pressure of, like these guys are in a very serious bubble already in January, I think, at the, tr- the team training camp. Um, and, yeah, like they're well-paid professional athletes, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it would be psychologically very difficult to be, for like almost the whole year, be not being able to interact with, with anybody. Uh, and I know there's obviously, I'm not trying, obviously you could compare it and say, well, frontline healthcare workers are, um have it tougher and that is correct i agree and they get paid less but that doesn't take away from the fact that go ride your bike for six hours a day go sit in your hotel room that's okay they're used to that at the grand tours uh but not the whole year and maybe that that could be playing into it as well i know i couldn't do that i would i would struggle to do that and i think a lot of people would too um so i don't think it's a very the most fun time to be a pro cyclist right now either and i think Getting to another th- sort of thing that I'm really concerned about is people are saying, oh, the Olympics might be cancelled. That could be playing into this as well. There's no certainty of a program in 2021, un- understandably, because of COVID. That being said, if the Olympics gets cancelled, that will be devastating psychologically to a lot of athletes. They spend years training for them. Some of them now will have spent like six years training for these Olympics or five years training for these Olympics. And if you're, say, Dumoulin, you want to focus on races and getting better and you need racing to get better, it's or other riders, it would be 
it'd be really tough with uh, the uncertainty about whether those races are going to be on or not. Um, but that's just me speculating more broadly about the general psychological impacts of the uh, the ever fluctuating calendar. So, what, what did you think, Benji? It is strange. I still think. I mean, I'm actually not too surprised. But were you surprised by his calendar, which was him starting in Strade, then doing MSR Flanders and the uh, E3 Saxe Bank Classic, which I think was Harrell Beck, and then he was going to do no Ardennes except for uh, I don't think. And then he was going to do Romandie Tour de France. Were you surprised that that was Dumoulin's schedule? Because I thought he was going to be their Giro guy uh, and they were going to let Kreisweik, uh do the domestique role for Roglic in the Tour. Yeah, I think uh, it, it is un- an unusual parkour for him for certain. But all in all, the the race that surprised me the most on that list was Milano San Remo. I don't know what Dumoulin can do there. I don't think he's got the acceleration to follow attacks on the Poggio. I don't believe he can get away on the Poggio. Attacking on the Chipressa is pretty much suicide for any rider that does it. So, yeah, with that race being on there, that made me like, huh? This doesn't fit there. With the races like Tour of Flanders and E3, I'd be down to see him do it. Because, quite simply, we know that he can cover from the Bing Bang Tour ages ago, that he won once or multiple times even. So, this man can ride cobbles. And I would have loved to see him on the cobbles again. What surprised me the most about the calendar is that it's put up at 6.18 p.m., I think, yesterday. 7.18 p.m., 6.18 p.m., my bad. And today it's already cancelled. So either something switched or communications to the social media department was not on time that they could take this tweet out of their planned schedule. But it's also not a scheduled tweet. So the person that put out the schedule tweet, this is so confusing with schedule and scheduled, but <laughs> <laughs> the, the planning no, I, was I, brought a human, out. A human has posted that. Some human has yeah. posted that. Either, I, I assume someone manages his, twi- his Twitter account and took that video, so... Um, rather than Timula. But yeah, someone, someone's manually done that. So yeah, it is a bit odd that that's come out in that fashion. I think the last thing before I let Benji sign off, the last thing I want to say is I think it's a real shame, um, but I'm, I'm happy that Dumoulin, if he's not feeling great, is doing the best thing for him. I hope that this will allow him to do whatever he wants to do in life. If, if he doesn't want to come back to cycling, he doesn't have to. He's a smart guy, as I said before. And he should just do whatever makes him happy and his family happy. Um, and if that's not pro cycling, then there's plenty of other things to do in life. Um, that being said, I thought his performance at the Tour de France last year was incredible. To come back from that injury, to not have many race days in the legs at all, to have lockdown, to have the saddle sore, to being dropped by Wafanat in the earlier stages in the first two weeks, to fight the entirety of those three weeks, and then come seventh. And if he'd actually been the leader on another team, probably would have come in top five in that Tour de France. It was an outstanding performance. And that was why I was incredibly surprised that he wasn't marked down to be Giro captain uh, because I think Jumbo Bisma should be sending Kreisweik to help Roglic in the Tour in the mountains. Um, so that was my real surprise. And now maybe he wanted to do something different with the different program to spice things up and get him more motivated. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want that program. We got no quotes about it, but that was my feelings on the matter. Any last thoughts on this this news, Benji? Yeah, all in all, I completely agree. He's got to do in life what he wants to do in life. And I think that goes for everybody. And it's just sad that we see such a talented rider leave the sport so early. There's obviously not a timestamp on whether he come back, comes back or if he comes back or when he comes back. I hope that he just ends up finding whatever he likes doing. But I think that's pretty much everything we can add on this on this conversation, this emergency podcast, LRCP podcast about Tom Dumoulin. Now, if you like these kind of emergency podcasts, then head over to Twitter. We made a Twitter account most recently, and we're trying to keep that up to standards and keeping you informed on everything we're going to do. Planning of the podcast as well. So every roughly weekend, we try and already tell the people what podcasts they can expect and we also announced the guests that will be coming on in the coming weeks so for example if you hadn't seen it on twitter yet next week we've got tom scoinch and also cecily through as guests on the podcast but also uh 
spoiler, this is not on Twitter yet, so you've got an exclusive premiere. Jack Haig is coming on once again as well. So, yeah, it should be a very fun period coming on this uh, on this podcast. Thank you very much for being a part of our journey, and I guess we'll see you for the next podcast. Goodbye. Comment down below if you think we're missing something or if you agree with our takes on this. Um, because yeah i always learn a lot from your comments down below a lot of you are living in belgium and netherlands got your ear low to the ground on these sort of things and you might have some good insights but we'll see you later ciao